black people are committing suicide at alarming rates. And, you know, the question is this, this has been happening as far as the trend of suicides of black people. It has been climbing each and every year. You know, we've always lived in a system of racism, white supremacy. All right. Ever since 1505, since the first slave set foot on U.S. soil. Study the transatlantic slave trade, 1505. So we've been, you know, at a at an over 500 year disadvantage, setbacks, subjugation, you know, mistreatment, domination, disenfranchisement, you name it. We've been through it all and we're still suffering to this day. But we have a new climate of people now. This is a new climate of people that we are developing because, you know, back in the day, you know, you wouldn't really hear about black folks killing themselves, committing suicide. You rarely hear that. But now it's just becoming more and more common and happening at a more frequent rate. And so with this story here, with uh, this black software engineer who worked for Uber killed himself because of stress and racism, allegedly. And, um, This goes to show you that we live in a systemic, oppressive era, and we have a totally different makeup when it comes to dealing with issues pertaining to society in general, you know, things that are controlled, old and controlled by the dominant white society. And I've been a part of the, uh, the hashtag delete Uber movement since early January. Y'all can check out the video I did here back in January where the story came out where Uber was, you know, mistreating and actually, you know, displaying racial bias towards African-American customers, et cetera, et cetera. And I went ahead and deleted my Uber app and I haven't looked back since. So, you know, I'm going to read this story real quick, family. This is a very you know, intriguing story. Um, this is about a guy, you know, who was a uh, software engineer, black African-American software engineer who worked for Uber, got a great job making over well over six figures, exactly $170,000 a year. Um, worked at the Uber headquarters in San Francisco, was married, had two kids, beautiful family, owned a home and just, just, Hey, <laughs> Working in IT and and like I do, working in technology like I do, making good money like I do, you know, these kind of issues happen, but you have to learn how to deal with it. And so apparently the stress and the racism that he was dealing with caused him to commit suicide. But I'm going to further read this story. So the story is about Joseph Thomas. Like I said, he's been, he's married a software engineer for Uber and, um, making good money, great family. But, uh, it says here that, you know, um, he worked at Uber and Joseph Thomas struggled in a way he never experienced over a decade in technology. He worked long hours. He told his father and his wife that he felt immense pressure and stress at work and was scared he'd lose his job. Now, that's crazy. A guy like that, software engineer, you have Uber as part of your history, your job history in your resume. You could have quit your job and found another job just like that because you got Uber on your resume. So something got to him, you know, something got to him real bad. So let me further read this story. It says, uh, he told his father and his wife that he felt immense pressure and stress at his job and was scared to lose it. They urged him to see a psychiatrist. (laughs) Again, when do black people see psychiatrists and when do black people commit suicide? You know, that's totally not what we do, family. You know, our history shows us that we've always been 
spiritual people. We've always been this an even kill type of people. We don't believe in no damn psychiatrists and committing suicide and all, all that kind of shit like that. We, we, we've never experienced, we never dealt with that kind of stuff before. But anyway, let me finish this story. He told the doctor he was having panic attacks, trouble concentrating, and near constant anxiety. All suggested that he leave his job, but he was adamant that he could not. Interesting. He was always the smartest guy in the room, his father said. But while working at Uber, he went down the tubes. He became someone with very little confidence in himself. The guy just fell apart. It's hard to explain. He wasn't himself at all. Zakoy, Zakoy Thomas, I guess that's his wife. He say things like, my boss doesn't like me. His personality changed totally. He was horribly concerned about his work to the point he was almost unbelievable. He was saying he couldn't do anything right. One day in late August, Sokol came home from dropping their boys off at school. Joseph was sitting in his car in the garage. She got into the passenger seat to talk to him. Then she saw blood. Joseph had shot himself. He died in the hospital two years late, uh, two days later, excuse me, a week before he could have turned 34. Wow, just 33. His father and his widow are convinced that the work environment and stress at Uber triggered his suicide. Sakol Thomas has filed workers' compensation claim, seeking to hold Uber accountable for her husband's mental decline. If you put a hard-driving person in unrealistic, unrealistic tasks, it puts them in failure mode, said the elder Joe Thomas, who said his son described a sort of brainwashing at Uber. It makes them burn themselves out, like driving a Lamborghini in first gear. Wow. Brainwashing. Yeah, another form of social engineering. Um, Joseph Thomas, who was African-American, may have experienced racism as well, according to his loved ones and their lawyer. Like many Silicon Valley companies, Uber employs only a handful of black people in, tech, in technical jobs. Blacks account for 1%, like I've always talked about, in tech workers and none of its tech leaders, according to Uber's first diversity report released in March. Okay, so obviously Uber declined to comment on the legal dispute and said Thomas never complained to the company of extreme stress or racial discrimination. Of course, that's typical. They won't because guess what? The Uber is a white owned company. Who in the hell is he going to go to that's going to believe him? Right? That's typical. No family should go through this unspeakable heartbreak the Thomas family has experienced, said Uber spokesperson Eva Baran. Our prayers and thoughts are with them. Wow. Had a family, making great money, house, and killed himself. I mean, your family's first, okay? The, the stress, the racism, the volatile environment that he's been dealing with working at Uber was so high. Everything else didn't matter. He didn't even want to leave the job. That's how crazy that was. Didn't even want to leave the job. Knowing the fact that having black people in technical positions in technology is like finding a unicorn. It's like finding a needle in the haystack. So he was one of the guys that made it. Despite all of that, Killed himself. Committed suicide. We got a different breed of black people today, family. Uh, just a different breed of black people today. Uh, you know, it's, again, it's how, it's your surroundings. It's epigenetics. It's, it's what your environment was like growing up. That all makes up how you are growing up. How can you deal with a, a tumultuous environment? How can you deal with personal issues, relationships, black people killing themselves over females, males, right? You've seen it the past month or so, you know, black guy shows up, kills his estranged wife and, you know, an elementary school kid. Then a couple of weeks later, Stevie, Steve breaks up with his girl, goes on a rampage, kills an elderly person on Facebook live, and then kills himself. Right. Running away from the cops. We, we're dealing with a brand new 
just a brand new group of people in terms of how black people deal with volatile situations. I just saw, I just saw a, uh, a video shout out to, uh, Willie D Willie D did a video about some teenage couple or not teenage, I guess some college students, a college student couple, they committed suicide. Like both of them, the girl committed suicide. And then the guy was on Facebook live or something like that. Social media. And that's another thing I've always thought. I've said this last year. I said, you know, social media is the downfall for black society or at least one of them. Everybody doing crazy wild stuff on social media. It's just, it's got to stop. We know this, but just like I said, black people are just committing suicide and doing crazy shit like that. Not knowing how to deal with volatile situations and committing suicide at alarming rates. We're just dealing with a whole new makeup of people family. And again, it goes back to how you were brought up, how you were raised to deal with these issues, to deal with these uncircumcised, these unforeseen circumstances. Right. And you know, with this story is no different. This, this guy, you know, again, had a great job, great family. His, I would say his, his, his title and his position is great. I'm just, I'm not saying working at Uber is great. Cause I don't know. I, I, according to this story, it was a nightmare, right? But he did have a great job in the sense of his title and all that kind of stuff. But again, this guy could have easily found another job, you know, just like that based off his experience and his resume. But these guys, like the story says, or his father said in the story, brainwashed, brainwashed. Wow, that's that's crazy. That is crazy. So anyway, family, those are my thoughts on the story. Leave your comments down below about this story. Uh, let me know if you guys uh, have joined the movement about if you use Uber in the past and then you heard about the story about uh, or you never use Uber, period. Let me know your thoughts down below. I've always been since January anti Uber, never going to ride Uber again based off the fact that they practice systemic oppression, racial bias, whatever you want to call it. Uh, I don't mess with them at all, period. Bottom line. So let me know if you if you also do the same thing with Uber. And um, I've always talked about, you know, like I said, with, with my channel, it's about black empowerment. So, you know, patronizing and supporting a black-owned business such as a Uber type business that's black owned. I fully support it or, you know, help trying to help fund it. I fully support it. You know what I'm saying? So, uh, anyway, those are my thoughts on that family. Uh, make sure you follow me on social media, Instagram and Twitter. Okay. Both links will be down below in the description. That's the best way to contact me. I know some of the, some of the guy, uh, my last video was replying, talking about, um, you should join these live streams or something like that. And I'm like, okay, thanks, man. Appreciate it. But, you know, obviously he doesn't know my history. I've been doing live streams and panel discussions for years, like five, six years, bro. Like I've, I've done screenings and panel discussions and all this kind of stuff. That's like nothing new for me, man. That's not exciting <laughs> for me anymore. I'm, I'm on a whole nother kind of plateau right now in terms of trying to, uh, in this particular societal issue of systemic oppression, AKA white supremacy and replacing it with a system of justice. That's what I'm on right now. Right? So, uh, I appreciate the gesture family. Uh, the, the, the guy who, uh, tried to reply with my last video, good gesture, but just go check your history. Go check my history, man. I've, I've been doing panel discussions and live streams for years, for many years. All right. So anyway, family, those are my thoughts. Leave your comments down below. Like I said, family, uh, if you can also, please make a donation to my PayPal account. Uh, my link will be down below in the description. I'll be working on a documentary for the black family structure. All right. That's still undergoing. That's still in the works. So any support will be great. All right, family. So until next time, Chauncey, a.k.a. the Black Separatist, signing out. Peace.